All right, students, let's go ahead and start our revision today. Today is the third day of the revision. We'll be going ahead and revising the chapter of nature of supply in detail. And also we'll be going ahead and revising the chapter of charge of GST, which is basically section number nine and section number nine of the CGST Act and section number five of the IGST Act along with the amendment which is applicable for your November 22 exam. Right, Baba? You heard it right. Section number 9, there is a small amendment. We'll be also studying the amendment along with the revisionary. Right, everyone? Now, without going ahead and wasting any more time, let's go ahead and get it started. But remember one thing, at the end of the revisionary, there'll be a quiz and you have to go ahead and watch the revisionary carefully so that you can go ahead and answer the quiz. The person answering the quiz correctly, basically, you'll have to comment in the comment section the answer and i'll be going ahead and choosing one person and we'll be giving you a free 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 chart book right everyone so please go ahead and watch the revisionary careful so now without wasting much time let's go ahead and start with the revision of charge of gst and nature of supply all right students let's go ahead and revise the next chapter the next chapter is nature of supply everyone over here before we go ahead and learn nature of supply we have to go ahead and learn first of all india when we go ahead and learn india india means number one territory of india which comprises of all the states and the union territories now india includes territorial waters of india which is from here up to 12 nautical miles which is approximately how much which is not approximately which is 22 kilometers and from here up to 100 up to 188 nautical mile basically up to 200 nautical miles from the baseline till here 12 nautical mile is what territorial waters of india this is what exclusive economic zone which is how much 188 nautical miles done sir so sir india means the territory of india territorial waters of india under the territorial waters whatever the seabed and subsoil is there that is also india after that whatever is the exclusive economic zone that is also india below that we have the continental shelf continental shelf is also india and above india and the territorial waters of india whatever the air space is also there that is also india gst is applicable in india and india means what territory of india territorial waters of india under that seabed and subsoil after that exclusive economic zone below that continental shelf and the air space above the territory and the territorial waters of india is india done everyone now when we are going ahead and learning the first thing we have to go ahead and learn is about interstate supply section number seven goes ahead and talks about interstate supply sir what do you mean by interstate supply section number seven subsection one and section number seven subsection three goes ahead and says seven one and seven three sub subject to provision of section number 10 supply of goods where the location of supplier and place of supply are in two different state two different ut one state and one ut or section number seven three goes ahead and says subject to provision of section number 12 first you go ahead First, you go ahead and determine what? Pro place of supply as per section number 12. Then, if supply of service where location of supplier and place of supply are in two different states, two different UT, one state and one UT, it is always interstate supply. So, section number 71 and section number 73 went ahead and told what? Whenever location of supplier and place of supply are in two different states, two different UT, one state, one UT, then it is always interstate supply. Section number 7, 2 and 4. Section number 7, 2 went ahead and told, whenever you import goods into the India, till they cross the custom frontiers, it is always interstate supply. Sir, importation of service is always interstate supply. Section number 7, subsection 5, whenever supply of goods, supply of service or both, there is a supply of goods or supply of service or both, where location of supplies in India and place of supply is outside India, it is always Interstate supply, supply to or supply by an SCZ unit or developer is always interstate supply. And whenever something is not intra and the transaction is happening in the taxable territory, it will be always 
interstate supply. So, sir, whenever supply of goods, services, or both is happening in the taxable territory, it is not intrastate supply and not covered anywhere else. It will be always interstate supply. Sir, what is intrastate supply? Section number 8 goes ahead and says, what is intrastate? Intrastate, section number 8.1 talks about supply of goods. 8.2 goes ahead and talks about supply of service. Section number 8.1 says, subject to the provision of section number 10, means first determine the place of supply as per section number 10, section number 10 of the IGST Act. Now, if you could determine the place of supply as per section number 10, then supply of goods, where location of supplier and place of supply in the same state or UT, it is always intrastate supply section number 81 proviso is there which goes ahead and says following shall not be intra so sir supply of goods to or by an SCZ unit or developer will not be intra because it is always inter sir importation of goods till they cross the custom frontier will never be intra because it is always inter and whenever you are going ahead and supplying goods to a tourist then always it is never intra it will always be interstate then section number 82 goes ahead and says subject to the provision of section number 12. First you go ahead and apply section number 12 of the IGST Act. Determine the place of supply. Now whenever location of supplier and the place of supply in the same state or UT, then it's always a intrastate supply of service. Intrastate supply of service. There is a proviso in 82 which goes ahead and says, sir, if you are going ahead and supplying services to or services are being supplied by and SCZ unit or developer, it will always be in interstate, never intra. Are we clear, everyone? Yes, sir, we all got it. Now, everyone over here, if I go ahead and tell you, sir, over here I went ahead and told, whenever location of supplier is in India and place of supply is outside India, it is always what? Interstate and IGST will come, but it is not export unless it falls within the definition of export if you go ahead and see export the definition export of goods means taking of goods from india outside india so if you are taking from india to a place outside india that is export export of service ka definition says means the supply of any service where the location of supply is in india lo location of recipient is outside india place of supply is outside india what you are receiving is foreign convertible currency or where INR whenever permitted by RBI and you both are not mere establishments of distinct person. Sir, what do you mean by establishment of a distinct person? That is explanation number one and explanation number two. Explanation number one went ahead and told a person has one establishment in India, one establishment outside India, then it will be deemed as establishment of distinct person. I have one establishment in India, one branch office outside India, both are what? Distinct person. Then they are telling, I have one establishment in a state or UT, another establishment outside the state or UT, then always they are establishment of distinct person. I have one establishment in a state, another establishment also in the state and both are registered within that state, then also they are establishment of distinct person. Sir, whenever you are going ahead and telling, sir, establishment, then they are going ahead and telling, person carrying on business through a branch office or an agency office or a representational office in any territory will be treated as having an establishment in that territory. When will it be told that you have an establishment in the other territory? When? You have a branch office over there or you have a representational office over there or an agency office over there. Then it will be told that you have an establishment in that territory. And always remember, if you have one establishment in India, one establishment outside India, both because are under you only, they will always be treated as establishment of distinct person. Even though under you, they will be always treated as establishment of distinct person. Can we go ahead everyone? Yes, sir. We got it till here. Then we then comes section number. 16, but this amendment which is there, authorized operation is not applicable for your May 22 exam. Okay, everyone. Now, section number 16, zero rated supply. Zero rated supply means exports are always zero rated. Export means, sir, in case of goods, when goods go outside India, that is export. Services, supplies in India, recipient is outside India, place of supply is outside India. What you are receiving is foreign convertible currency or in case of Whenever permitted by RBI, INR is also okay and you both are not mere establishment of distinct person, then it is export. Whenever it is export, you get the benefit of zero rating. Sir, what are the benefits of zero rating? How do you get the benefit of zero rating? Basically, you are buying to selling a chain is made zero rated. There is no tax implication at all. Sir, what is zero rated? Exports are zero rated and supply of good services or both. 
two a S C Z unit or developer. So if I am supplying to an S C Z unit or developer, that is also zero rated. If I am exporting, that is also zero rated. Are we clear, everyone? Then they are going ahead and telling subject to section number seventeen five means. Section number 17, 5 may if something is told blocked, then it is always blocked. Other than that, if you are going ahead and using something which is exempted in India, for an example, I am going ahead and manufacturing something. I bought plastic, manufactured plastic bangle. Plastic bangles might be exempted in India, but if I am going ahead and exporting, the ITC which is there will be available to me and I can claim a refund of that. They are telling ITC shall be available for making zero rated supply, even if such supply is exempt supply in India. When you are going ahead and exporting it, it will be zero rated and ITC refund will ITC will be available and you can also claim a refund. Then they went ahead and told sir to make buying to selling a chain when you go ahead and make zero rated supply tax free. So for an example, I am making export or I am supplying to a SEZ unit or developer. How is the government going ahead and making sure that my buying to selling a chain is tax free? Government goes ahead and says you have two options. Person making zero rated supply eligible to go ahead and claim refund under two option. Number one is he can go ahead and give an LUT or bond, letter of undertaking or a bond. Now he can export without paying any IGST. He can export or supply to an SEZ without paying any IGST and whatever, whatever ITC is there will be given as refund. Sir, the second option is when he is going ahead and exporting or is supplying to an SCZ, he will not go ahead and give an LUT or bond. He will pay IGST. Whatever ITC is there, he will use to pay his IGST and balance he will pay in cash and he will claim a refund of the total IGST amount. Yes, sir, everyone. Yes, sir, we are all clear. Section number 9 went ahead and told if a person is going ahead and supplying. So, supposing one person is going ahead and supplying to an EZ, always remember EZ. Is a separate, is the name is other territory and it's a union territory. So, if a person is going ahead and supplying in a union territory from supposingly Delhi, Delhi is a state and you are supplying in union territory, it will always be a interstate supply and IGST will come. Now, tell me one thing, supposingly one person is supplying within the EZ only to someone. Sir, EZ may someone is there. Then, Baba, it will always be intrastate supply, CGST and UTGST because EZ is a other territory. Are we clear, everyone? Baba, EZ may you will not have home. Might be there is an oil field which is there. This oil field supply to another oil field. It is always intrastate supply and CGST and UTGST. Yes, everyone. Yes, sir. We are clear. That is what I... Okay. Now, the next section over here. This is supply to or fro. EZ. EZ is another territory which is a union territory. Supply to or from an EZ is always intra interstate supply, but within the EZ, intrastate CGST and UTGST. Now, section number 9 goes ahead and says if you are going in and supplying in the territorial waters of India, I am supplier supplying in the territorial waters of India, place of supply deemed to be the nearest coastal state. If, sup if supplies in the territorial water of India, supplier the location deemed to be the nearest coastal state. In the registration chapter, we will also go ahead and see that, sir, whoever is in whoever is near the coastal state, that person who is in the territorial water of India, he takes registration also in the nearest coastal state. So, section number 9 went ahead and told one simple thing. If you are supplying the territorial waters of India, place of supply nearest coastal state. If supply is in the territorial waters of India, supplies location in the nearest coastal state. Now, over here, one small circular is there that, sir, if one person is going ahead and providing short-term accommodation, banqueting, conferencing or services provided to a SEZ, supplies in Karnataka, accommodation service also provided in Karnataka as per section number 123C, where the immovable property is there, that is the place of supply. Supplies in Karnataka, hotel is located in Karnataka, place of supply is Karnataka, intrastate he will charge CGST and SGST. But, supposingly short-term accommodation, banqueting services are provided to an SEZ. Baba, section number 7, 5B specifically goes ahead and says whenever you are supplying services to an SEZ, it is interstate supply and IGST should come. So, that person should charge CGST, SGST or IGST. So, Baba, section number 12.3, section number 12.3, C is a general provision. 
and section number 75B is a specific provision for SCZ and always we know that a specific provision prevails over general provision and whenever short term accommodation, banqueting, conferencing services are provided to home, SCZ, it is always interstate supply and IGST will come. Also, the person can go ahead and take the benefit of zero rated supply. Right, everyone? Baba, this chapter which is there is a C graded chapter. But my thought over here is that you should know this chapter because the definition of export of service is important. Zero rated supply is very important. Right, everyone? I'll go ahead and close my chapter of nature of supply over here. Congratulations, people. All right, people, let's go ahead and revise the chapter of charge of GST over here. People, this is a very important chapter. Section number 93 and section number 95 are the most important part of this. What are we going to learn in this chapter? We are going to learn section number 9 and we are going to learn section number 5. Sir, can you give us a quick linking? Yes, Baba, take a linking to the chapter. We started learning GST with goods and service. Whenever goods or services is being supplied, supply can be either interstate or intrastate. Interstate supply, IGST will be levied. Intrastate supply, CGST and SGST will be levied. Once GST is levied, it has to be collected and paid by a taxable person. Today, we are going to learn the GST ka levy section, which is section number 5 and section number Nine section number nine has section number nine one nine two nine three nine four and section number nine five section number nine one goes ahead and says when will GST be levied? CGST will be levied when on interstate what supply of good services or both except alcoholic liquor for human consumption on the value which is determined under section number fifteen maximum rate will be twenty percent. This rate will be notified by the government on recommendation of council. You will have to collect and pay if you are a taxable person. A taxable person is a person who is liable under section number 22 or 24 in the registration chapter. Can I go ahead everyone? Then section number 92 talks about HP man, HP man, high speed diesel, petroleum crude, motor spirit, aviation turbine fuel and natural gas. This five item pay GST will be levied from a date which is notified by the government on recommendation of council. As of now, no GST but GST will come from a date notified by the government on the recommendation of council. Then we have section number 93 and section number 94 which talks about RCM. Section number 93 goes ahead and says government will go ahead and notify goods and government will notify services on which GST has to be paid under RCM always by the recipient. Done everyone. Now here goods are also notified, services are also notified but for CA final exam, goods exam may they will not go ahead and ask relating to goods. Are we clear everyone? For CA final exam, they will not go ahead and ask you which are the notified goods on which reverse charge will come. For CS and CMA student, please refer to your textbook. You will be able to find the goods on which reverse charge is applicable. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the notified service on which reverse charge mechanism is applicable. The first first service is goods transport agency ka service. Always remember one thing. If there is a goods transport agency, goods transport agency can provide services to an unregistered person also and to a registered person also. Unregistered person may you have to remember if it's a factory which is registered under Factories Act, body corporate which is registered basically under the Companies Act or under their Act. If it is a society which is registered under the Societies Act basically established under their law or cooperative society which is established under their law basically and then it is partnership firm. If it is a partnership firm, whether registered under the Partnership Act or unregistered, includes an AOP also plus an LLP also. Always remember, if unregistered person under GST is a factory, F, B, S, C, O, O and P, factory, body corporate, society, cooperative society or partnership firm, not registered under the GST Act, but their respective under their respective law under they are registered or incorporated. But partnership firm ke liye registered or unregistered, then they have gone ahead and told you will have to take compulsory registration under GST and pay GST under 
RCM at the rate of 5%. Right, everyone, because only when the GTA opts for the option of 5%, reverse charge mechanism will come. Now, if GTA is going ahead and giving services to an unregistered person under GST and he is a casual taxable person, which is basically that handicraft supplier who was exempted from registration up to 20 lakh, 10 lakh, then that casual taxable person ka case may RCM will not come. If RCM doesn't come, forward charge will come, but government has gone ahead and told forward charge also will not come. It is exempted. If GTA goes ahead and provides services to other register, unregistered persons, then always remember it is always exempted. If GTA goes ahead and provides services to a registered person, and registered person can be of two types. One is TDS deductor and all other types of registered person. Correct everyone? If he is a TDS deductor and he is a department of central government, state government, local authority or governmental agency then he will have to pay gst under rcm no 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 it is exempted but if he is a tds deductor which is a notified category then he will have to go ahead and pay gst under rcm and all other registered person whoever it is if it's a registered person then always gst has to be paid under rcm always remember this is applicable in a case where gt has opted for 5% reverse charge mechanism. Are we clear everyone? Then always the recipient will pay the GST under RCM. But if the GTA has gone ahead and opted for 12%, then GTA will charge under forward charge and GTA gets ITC also. Done sir. So I have gone ahead and told if there is a GTA which is going ahead and providing services to factory, body corporate, society, cooperative society, partnership firm, which is basically partnership firm registered, unregistered, including an AOP plus an LLP plus it is providing to a registered person or a registered CTP, then they will have to pay GST under RCM. But if registered person is a TDS deductor, which is basically Department of Central Government, State Government, Local Authority or Governmental Agency, then they will not have to go ahead and pay GST under RCM. I hope you guys are clear. You just have to remember this chart. Next. Sir, if there is an advocate going ahead and providing service, always remember one thing, advocate going ahead and providing services to a business entity, which is a business entity whose last check turnover is greater than the registration limit, only then reverse charge mechanism will come. So, if advocate or firm of advocate or senior advocate is going ahead and providing services to a business entity whose last check turnover is greater than registration limit, only then reverse charge mechanism will be applicable. Then, sir, if there is an arbitral tribunal, arbitral tribunal going ahead and providing services to a business entity, again, the business entity is in the taxable territory and last check at turnover is less than, is exceeding the registration limit, is exceeding the registration limit, only then RCM shall be applicable. Remember, advocate, senior advocate, firm of advocate or arbitral tribunal ka case may, don't see current year turnover. See last year cut turnover. If last year cut turnover had crossed the aggregate registration limit, then you will... RCM will be applicable. The next one over here is sponsorship services. Sponsorship services provided to a body corporate or a partnership firm. Baba, remember, partnership firm includes a LLP also. Partnership firm in reverse charge, you have to remember, includes an LLP. So, this this body corporate or partnership firm has to pay the GST under RCM on the sponsorship services. Next, if central government, state government, union treaty government or local authority is going ahead and providing services to a business entity in the taxable territory other than which services? Post, PAIT, other than post, airport, immovable property and transportation ka service. Always remember, government going ahead and providing post, airport, Immovable property and transportation ka services. Please go ahead, everyone over here now. If central government, state government is going ahead and providing post related service, post may always remember if post related services are provided to government, then it is always exempted. If government ka department, which is post office department, going ahead and providing services to others, then others may you have to see speed post, agency service, life insurance, and express parcel, then it is forward. Then it is always forward charge mechanism if it is to. Other services, which are the other services, other than speed post, agency service, life insurance and express parcel, any other services provided by department of post is always 
exempted. Done everyone. So, postal department ka service pay, never reverse charge will come. Then sir, airport or port related services, when they are provided to a ship or a vessel, in that case also forward charge mechanism is there, reverse charge will not come. So, if government is going ahead and providing services in relation to immovable property, then remember, if it is provided to registered person, then RCM, unregistered person, then forward charge mechanism. So, in the chart, if you see, it is written, government ka services of renting of immoral property, always registered business entity. Registered business entity has to pay GST under RCM. Then, Baba, P-A-I-T, T means transportation services, transportation of goods or passenger ka services, when they are provided by the government, always GST comes under forward charge mechanism. Here, only one scenario may reverse charge was there, which has already been told, when central government, state government gives renting of Immobile property to registered business entity, registered business entity pays GST under RCM. Other than post, airport, immobile property and transportation ka service, if government is providing any services to a business entity whose aggregate turnover in the last year was greater than registration limit and if the consideration is charged is greater than 5000, only then reverse charge mechanism will come. So, if central government, state government, unit entity or local authority government is providing services to a business entity whose last year turnover is greater than registration limit and the amount which is charged is more than 5000, then only reverse charge mechanism will come. Then, Baba, the next one over here is central government, state government, local authority or governmental, uh, no, central government, state government, unit entity or local authority giving renting of immobile property to whom? Registered business entity, then also reverse charge mechanism will come on the registered business entity. The next one over here is any person giving development right, transfer of development right or floor space index to a promoter, promoter will pay the GST under RCM. Any person going ahead and giving long term lease of land 30 years or more to whom? To a promoter and promoter is paying upfront amount or promoter is paying monthly rent, whatever it is, promoter have to go ahead and pay on the total amount GST under RCM. The next one over here is director. Director going ahead and giving services to a body corporate or a company in the taxable territory. Always the company will go ahead and pay the GST under RCM or the body corporate will pay the GST under RCM. Here there is a circular which goes ahead and says independent directors are never employed and GST will always be payable by the company under RCM. However, if it is a whole time director, you will have to go ahead and see if whole time director is an employee in the company, he is paid salary and the company has deducted TDS under section number 192 of the Income Tax Act, then it is neither supply of goods nor supply of service, no GST. But if the whole time director has gone ahead and given services to the company, not in the capacity of employee, not in the capacity of employee, company paid him professional fees, TDS under 194J of the Income Tax Act is done, then Baba, it is a supply and reverse charge will come, company has to pay GST under RCM. So, always remember one thing, independent director ka services to the company, company pays GST under RCM, whole time director giving services to the company, you have to see if it is salary, then no GST under RCM, but if it is not salary, professional fees, the company has to pay GST under RCM. The next is insurance agent giving services to an insurance company which is in India, taxable territory, then reverse charge mechanism will be applicable on insurance company. There is a recovery agent, recovery agent giving services to a bank and financial institution or NBFC in the taxable territory, bank financial institution or the NBFC has to pay GST under RCM. Then there is a music composer giving services to music company, photographer or artist, he is going ahead and giving his services to a producer or like always remember all these music composer, photographer, artist, they go ahead and give the intellectual property right, ka usage right to this music composer. They allow them to use their intellectual property right against a consideration. When they are going ahead and giving, music composer is give, allowing someone to allow, allowing someone to use his IPR, basically is giving intellectual property right to use, it's a supply of service and on that GST has to be paid by music company under reverse charge. If there is a photographer going in and allowing someone to use his IPR. The person who is using his IPR has to pay GST under RCM. Artist has made some artwork and he has gone ahead and given his artwork to someone to use. Then that whatever is the consideration on that GST has to be paid by that person under RCM. Are we clear everyone? The next one over here is author. I have gone ahead and written a book. If I go ahead and give the book publishing right to whom? To a publisher means I am allowing him to use my IPR. Publisher has to pay GST under RCM, provided the publisher is in the taxable territory. 
always remember if by chance you go ahead and provide any service outside india all the services which we are discussing if you provide outside india then you are in india location of supplies in india location of recipient is outside india for an example i wrote a book I gave it to a publisher outside India. Location of supplies in India. Recipient is outside India. Place of supply is outside India. If he gives you foreign convertible currency and you both are not mere establishment of distinct person, your act becomes export of service which is zero rated supply. Are we clear everyone? This is just the additional thought which I told you. Can I go ahead everyone? Now, if I am an author and I am going ahead and giving to a publisher my publishing right, then always the publisher in India, that is the taxable territory, has to pay the GST under RCM. Just tell me one thing, if I give it to a publisher outside India, then, then it is an export of service. Sir, now authors went ahead and told the government, government, we want to pay GST under forward charge mechanism, we want to take ITC. So, government went ahead and told author, if you want to go ahead and collect GST and pay to the government under forward charge mechanism, you can go online. No, you cannot go online. You can go tell your jurisdictional officer, give a declaration that, sir, I want to take registration. I will go ahead and pay you the GST under forward charge. Also, you give a declaration to whom? To the publisher that you don't pay the GST under RCF. I will collect and I will pay. Then everyone, forward charge mechanism is applicable on authors. If author has taken registration, declaration given to J.O. means jurisdictional officer on the invoice to the and also on the invoice to the publisher. Then members of overseeing committee, when they are giving services to the RBI, RBI will pay GST under RCM. Direct selling agent who is an individual. Remember, direct selling agent who is an individual giving services to whom? Bank or NBFC, NBFC or bank pays GST under RCM. Remember one thing everyone, if direct selling agent is not an individual, then in that scenario reverse charge is not there. Next, business facilitator or business correspondent. I went ahead and told you, if there is an agent of a business facilitator, he gives services to business facilitator, business facilitator will give it to the bank. If there is an agent of a business correspondent, he will give to whom? Business correspondent and business correspondent will give it to the bank. Always remember, business facilitator is always free, free, free. When business facilitator gives services to the bank, bank pays GST under RCM. And when agent gives to the business facilitator, agent will come collect under forward charge and he will pay GST under forward charge mechanism. Right? Done everyone. Now, agent of a business correspondent, business correspondent is always stuck. Whenever he will give services to the business correspondent, means agent will give services to the business correspondent, business correspondent pays under RCM. When business correspondent gives the services to the bank, he will come collect under forward charge and pay the GST under forward charge mechanism. So, reverse charge is when? Reverse charge is only when business facilitator gives to the bank, reverse charge mechanism is there, bank will pay and when agent of a business correspondent gives to whom? Business correspondent then reverse charge mechanism is there. Otherwise, always forward charge mechanism is there. Always remember one thing, there is an exemption which has been given. If services of business facilitator, business correspondent or their intermediary are provided with respect to accounts in rural area branch, Baba, with respect to accounts in rural area branch, then this all pay, this all services pay, GST will be exempted, but provided the services with respect to accounts in rural area branch. The next one over here is security service. Security service means providing bodyguard. If someone is going ahead and providing bodyguard, who is this someone? Any person other than body corporate, if he is giving bodyguard to whom? Registered person. Registered person will pay GST under RCM. So, there is any person other than a body corporate who is going ahead and giving what? Security personnel to a registered person. You will have to go ahead and see if registered person is a TDS deductor or if registered person is a composition dealer or registered person is other registered person. If he is going ahead and giving to a TDS deductor, if he is going to ahead and giving to a TDS deductor who is department of central government, state government, local authority or governmental agency, then Baba RCM will not come. Okay everyone, if RCM is not there, forward charge mechanism will come. Can I go ahead everyone? Next, if he is going ahead and giving to composition dealer, okay, if TDS deductor notified category then, then RCM will come. Sir, if uh, any person going ahead and giving to a registered person who is a composition dealer, composition dealer ka case mein RCM is not there, RCM is not there then forward charge mechanism will come. If any person giving security personnel ka service to any other registered person then always 
RCM. Remember one thing, whenever security personnel ka services are provided by any person other than body corporate to whom registered person who is a TDS deductor under A, B, C category, then forward charge mechanism is there and registered person is a composition dealer, then also forward charge mechanism is there. Otherwise, always reverse charge mechanism. Can I go ahead everyone? Yes sir, let's go ahead. Everyone over here now. The next one over here is renting a motor vehicle by any person. Remember one thing, if I am a person Renting a motor vehicle, I am doing renting a motor vehicle by any person who is not a body corporate. Number two, renting a motor vehicle where fuel cost is included. Number three, I did not give invoice charging 12% and I am giving the services to a body corporate only then RCM. Four things you have to remember. Number one, rent, number one, any person other than body corporate. Giving, renting a motor vehicle where fuel cost is included. Number three, I am not issuing invoice charging 12% means I might be I am charging 5% or might be I am not charging anything, might be I am giving bill of supply and recipient is a body corporate, then recipient will pay GST under RCM. All the four things has to be there. Next, sir, there is a services of lending of securities. One person has lent his securities to a borrower. In that scenario, always the lending fees pay, borrower will go ahead and pay the GST under RCM. Circular was there that it will always be treated as interest rate supply and IGST has to be paid under reverse charge mechanism by whom? By the borrower. Are we clear everyone? Yes sir, we all got it. Everyone tell me one thing. Section number 9, I told you section number 9, one normal levy. Section number 9, 2, HP man. Section number 9, 3, I went ahead and told you the RCM. RCM on what? RCM on diagrams. You have to remember diagrams to remember all the services. D for, if I go ahead and tell you, the first one was GTA ka service. Correct everyone? GTA opting for 5%. Number 2 was advocate or senior advocate or arbitral tribunal ka services done everyone or form of advocate ka service then the next one over here was sponsorship service as for sponsorship services given to firm or partnership firm or body corporate then the next one over here was government ka services g for government ka services right everyone then the next one was immobile property related services if given by the government to a registered person, registered person will pay the GST under RCM. Correct everyone. The next one over here. Sir, the next one was director ka services when they are given to a body corporate, body corporate or company pays GST under RCM. What is the next service over here? Insurance agent, I for insurance agent. Baba, immovable property when I say immovable property only when government is giving immovable property on rent to a registered person, registered person pays under RCM, not always. Then Baba, I for insurance agent ka service, always insurance company will pay GST under RCM. R for recovery agent, recovery agent ka service, always recovery agent, bank, financial institution or NBFC will pay GST under RCM, then Baba, then next was what, music composer ka services, music composer or photographer or artist, photo, Baba, photographer or artist ka service, always RCM will come. Next, sir, was author, always remember author giving services to a publisher, publisher has to pay GST under RCM, however, author has an option to go ahead and pay GST under forward charge mechanism also. What is the next one everyone? The next one is M for again one members of overseeing committee. Then over here, this is done members of overseeing committee giving services to RBI. What is the next one over here? The next one is direct selling agent D for direct selling agent who is an individual giving services to bank. On that scenario also RCM will come. The next one is Business facilitator, you have to remember always, agent of a business correspondent, giving to business correspondent, RCM will come. And only on business facilitator ka service to the bank, RCM will come. Done everyone. What is the next one over here? The next is security services, RCM will come. Then, Baba R for renting of motor vehicle where fuel cost is included. In that scenario also RCM will come. And one is securities lending. Securities lending ka case may also RCM will come. D for direct selling agent. Always remember di diagrams everyone. Now over here one more thing is there. If you have gone ahead and given development right. D for development right. Baba development right. 
or floor space index or long term lease pay if you have given land then also RCM will come on the promoter. So, I went ahead and told you diagrams for reverse charge mechanism is applicable. What is diagram? D for director, D for direct selling agent who is an individual, D for development right or floor space index or long term lease pay when you are giving land to a promoter. Then everyone I for insurance agent, I for immovable property given on rent by the government to a registered person. A for advocate, A for arbitral tribunal, A for advocate, senior advocate or form of advocate and A for arbitral tribunal ka service pay, always business entity whose turnover in the last year is greater than registration limit has to pay GST under RCM, G for GTA who is opting for 5%, G for government ka services other than PAIT. For PAIT, post, airport, immobile property and transportation, I have already told you. The next one is over here, recovery agent ka service. R for recovery agent and R for renting of motor vehicle where the fuel cost is included. A for author, A for agent of business correspondent and only business facilitator ka service pay. RCM will come. M for music composer, photographer or like artist. Music composer, photographer, artist or like. And Baba, M for members of overseeing committee, as for sponsorship service, as for security service, as for securities lending scheme of SEBI. Are we clear everyone? Then we have section number 94. Section number 94 goes ahead and says, if any unregistered person gives specified category of goods or service to specified registered person, then the specified registered person has to pay GST under RCM. Now, they have gone ahead and told input and input services, if they are being supplied to a promoter by an unregistered person and the promoter has bought 80% from registered person, then no RCM, but 80% is less if you have gone ahead and bought from registered person. For an example, promoter bought 10 lakh rupees ka input and input service, 8 lakhs would be GST paid. He bought only 7 lakh ka GST paid ka item, then Baba 1, 1 lakh rupees pay, he will have to pay GST under at the rate of 18% under RCM. The second one is cement. Cement ka case mein also promoter will always pay GST under RCM if he has bought from unregistered person. The la last one over here is capital goods. Capital goods being bought by a promoter. Also GST has to be paid under RCM if bought from a unregistered person. The next one over here is section number 95. Section number 95 goes ahead and says they will go ahead and notify category of services where interest rate supply who will be liable to pay e-commerce and all the provision of the law will be applicable to the e-commerce operator as if he is the person liable to pay tax right everyone here there were notified category of service earlier it was housekeeping accommodation transportation now they have gone ahead and made some improvement and it is thar what is thar transportation of goods transportation of sorry not goods passenger so if there is transportation of passenger which is happening by Radio taxi, mo motor cab, maxi cab or motorcycle. Now the new addition over here for your number 22 fresh amendment is they along with motorcycle they have gone ahead and told if transportation is happening by omnibus or any other motor vehicle. So what I am telling if there is an e-commerce operator through him transportation of passenger ka service is given which is given in might be radio taxi, motor cab, maxi cab, motorcycle, any omnibus or baba any motor vehicle always the e-commerce operator will be liable you will not see supplier ka status always e-commerce operator will be liable h for housekeeping services always remember housekeeping services ka case mein if the supplier is liable if the supplier is liable under section number 21 to register then supplier will be liable to pay the gst otherwise e-commerce operator basically housekeeping may urban club etc they will be liable to pay the gst to the government under section number 95 the next one over here is accommodation service like oyo rooms etc ka case may always remember if the supplier is liable under liable to register under section number 21 then supplier will have to pay but if supplier is not liable e-commerce operator will go ahead and pay the gst to the government under rcm now, here there is a new introduction, restaurant services, right everyone? What government went ahead and saw is, government went ahead and saw that Swiggy, Zomato, etc. Swiggy, Baba, Swiggy and Zomato, etc. Ke through, people are going ahead and ordering food. Order goes to a restaurant and restaurant goes ahead and supplies the food. Now, in this scenario, government went ahead and, went ahead and saw in India, Restaurants are going in and providing, there are a lot of small, small restaurants which are unregistered and hence government went in and caught the neck of the e-commerce operator which is Swiggy, Zomato, etc. and told them, you are the person who is liable to pay the 
tax and baba e commerce operator is now going to pay the gst not under uh, under section number 95 on all the restaurant services which are provided through whom e commerce operator e commerce operator will go ahead and collect the gst basically e commerce operator only will raise the invoice they will only collect the gst and they will pay the gst under section number 95 now swiggy zomato etc bought under what gst ka radar and they are the people who are liable to pay the tax under section number 95 on the restaurant services which are supplied through them whether the restaurant is registered or unregistered always swiggy zomato will be liable see over here everyone restaurant services always will be liable swiggy zomato all these e-commerce operator will be liable but now there is one exception they are telling supply of restaurant service in specified premise exception is supply of restaurant service in specified premises specified premises means premises double time premises have come premises providing hotel accommodation service having declared tariff greater than what 7500 make it 7500 per unit i will go ahead and tell you for an example there is what taj hotel over here in taj there is a restaurant okay everyone now supposingly you feel like eating from taj you went online taj ka declared tariff per room is greater than 7500 any room ka rent if it is greater than 7500 so taj ka room ka declared tariff is greater than 7500 now everyone over here if there is a restaurant in taj you went to swiggy zomato etc and the order got direct diverted over here and they went ahead and supplied to you the food in this scenario because the restaurant is located in a specified premise where the declared tariff of the room is more than 7500 government is telling in this scenario e-commerce operator under section number 95 will not be liable the service provider basically the restaurant all will only will be liable to pay the gst under no under forward charge they will only go ahead and collect the gst and pay to the government are we clear everyone remember one thing restaurant services are now under 95 and 95 means only always the e-commerce operator will be liable even if the restaurant is registered unregistered but over here one thing government went in and told that if the restaurant service is provided by that restaurant which is located in specified premise specified premise means supposingly taj hotel taj hotel is a specified premise because declared tariff per room any room is greater than 7500 then that becomes a specified premise and there if a hotel is located and they are going in and supplying food through swiggy zomato then swiggy zomato etc e-commerce operator will not be liable who will be liable supplier only will be liable right everyone yes sir point is clear there is a proviso over here which goes ahead and says sir if the e-commerce operator in all these cases you have to remember if e-commerce operator is having not having is having physical presence in india e-commerce operator will be liable if e-commerce operator does not have a physical presence in india representative will be liable no representative in india they have to appoint a representative for tax purposes and that representative will be liable to pay the tax section number 9495 may i told you t h a r services are notified transportation of passenger housekeeping accommodation and now restaurant services we are done with section number 91 normal levy 92 hp man 93 diagrams pay rcm 94 promoter has to pay on input input service which is shortfall cement and capital goods 95 thar service pay e-commerce operator will be liable then section number 5 has section number 51 normal levy 91 to 51 what is the difference 91 may it was interstate 51 is under the igst act so it says igst will be levied on interstate supply of good services or both except alcoholic liquor on the value under section number 15 maximum rate under igst will be 40 percent and it has to be collected and paid by a taxable person here under section number 51 there is a proviso which goes ahead and says that sir section number 51 ka proviso says whenever you import goods that shall always be interested igst will come igst will be, shall be levied and collected as per the custom tariff act when on the value determined under the custom act and at the point when custom duties are levied whenever you import goods from outside india on that igst will come it's an interstate supply but it will be levied collected under the custom act levied and collected as per the custom tariff act on the value determined under custom act and when custom duties are collected under the custom act only they will collect the 
IGST. Done, everyone. Section number five two, just like section number nine two, also talks about HP man pay. IGST will come from a date to be notified by government on recommendation of council. Section number five three may whatever services are notified under nine three, same services are notified under section number five three also. But the only difference over here is, sir, one minute. Section number nine three may what services are notified are notified under five three also. Intra becomes inter. That's all. All those services, when it is interstate, IGST will be paid under RCM. Now, under section number 53, there are two additional services notified that if any person is supplying any service from non-taxable territory to a person in the taxable territory, person in the taxable territory will pay the GST under RCM. But this is not applicable in case of NTOR because I told you OIDR services provided to an NTOR, OIDR collects the GST under forward charge and pays it to the government there is no reverse charge applicable the second reverse charge in section number 53 is sir if you are going ahead and doing transportation of vessel transportation of goods by a vessel from outside india to indian custom station and you are a foreign shipping company then foreign shipping company gave transportation service to you you are in india as an importer you will be liable to pay gst under rcm so if there is transportation of goods ka services given by whom foreign shipping company buy a vessel to a importer importer will be liable to pay gst under rcm then section number 54 and section number 55 are same as 94 and 95 only intra becomes interstate now over here one small point i have gone ahead and told over here what do you mean by body corporate because if you go ahead and see over here everywhere it is body corporate which is written right everyone always remember body corporate the meaning which is given in the companies act is an inclusive meaning so you just have to first understand it's an inclusive definition it is not the meaning so you have to first understand the meaning of body corporate body corporate means what body corporate means it's a it's an entity which is established under incorporated under law it is separate legal entity it has a perpetual succession and it has capacity of to sue and be sued are we clear everyone so that is the meaning of a body corporate body corporate means it's an entity which is incorporated under any law secondly it has separate legal entity perpetual succession it can sue and be sued then it's a body corporate are we clear everyone and they went ahead and told over here body corporate general meanings will be there plus also include a company incorporated outside india so indian company or foreign company both are body corporate or you call it corporation are we clear but it does not include a cooperative society or any other body corporate not being a company which the government has gone ahead and notified so if i go ahead and tell you body corporate indian company body corporate sir if it's a public company body corporate private company body corporate sir government company body corporate private company body corporate sir microsoft inc in india body corporate are we clear everyone sir ici incorporated under a law yes baba body corporate are we clear everyone but body corporate will not go ahead and include a corporate society a society or baba any person who has been notified by the government as not a body corporate that will not be a body corporate right everyone here we are done with section number 9 ka revision everyone listen to me very carefully section number 9 when you go ahead and read section number 93 is the most important part for your exam and section number 95 which is going ahead and talking about e commerce operator also becomes very important for your exam because there are two amendment one is transportation of passenger now by radio taxi motor cab maxi cab or omnibus or any other motor vehicle is covered and e commerce is liable secondly restaurant services which are provided through zomato swiggy and all zomato swiggy is now made liable but restaurant service may always remember if it's a restaurant which is located in specified premise where the accommodation is provided by that specified premise is the charges are more than 7500 for any unit then in that scenario e-commerce operator will not be liable the restaurant in the specified premise will be liable to pay the gst everyone over here now listen to me very carefully under section number 95 when the restaurant services are now brought under what 
notified services there is a circular also which has come let's go ahead and quickly read the circular what is the circular going ahead and telling would e-commerce still have to go ahead and collect tcs in compliance under section number 52 baba when restaurant services are provided through e-commerce e-commerce is going to pay the whole gst and hence there is no tcs ka provision which will be applicable would e-commerce have to mandatorily take a registration separate registration with respect to supply of restaurant service because now, e-commerce is going to go ahead and pay the GST on the restaurant service. E-commerce will raise the invoice, collect the GST and pay. Now, for the restaurant service, the e-commerce operator, does it have to go ahead and take separate registration? They went ahead and clarified. E-commerce need not go ahead and take separate registration for the restaurant service. They are showing their outward supply. In that only, they can go ahead and show the restaurant ka service. Would the e-commerce be liable to pay tax? On supply of restaurant service made by unregistered business? Yes, Baba. Whether the restaurant is registered or unregistered, if supply of service is done through the e-commerce, e-commerce will be liable to pay the GST under GST under section number 95, whether the restaurant is registered or unregistered. What would be the aggregate turnover of the person supplying restaurant service through e-commerce? Baba, in his turnover, so if there's a restaurant, he's supplying through e-commerce and he's supplying directly also to his customer who are walking customer. Both will be forming part of his aggregate turnover. When you are calculating aggregate turnover of a restaurant, his turnover will include his normal supplies also and his supplies through e-commerce also. Can the supplies of restaurant services made through e-commerce operator be recorded as inward supplies of e-commerce? Baba, restaurant services are supplied by this guy, restaurant service provider to the customer directly. Right everyone? Just because e-commerce is going ahead and paying taxes, it does not become the inward supply of the e-commerce. E-commerce has not gone ahead and taken restaurant service and e-commerce will not pay any GST under RCM. The next one, would e-commerce be liable to reverse the ITC? Baba, when e-commerce is going ahead and raising the bill for the restaurant service they are going ahead and telling because restaurant service what happens so if a person is going ahead and providing restaurant service he doesn't get itc now here people went ahead and told when e-commerce is going ahead and raising the bill for the restaurant service will e-commerce have to go ahead and reverse any itc because it is providing restaurant service also government went ahead and clarified no baba e-commerce does not have to go ahead and reverse any input tax credit sir can e-commerce utilize the itc to pay tax with respect to restaurant service baba always remember one thing restaurant service ka tax e-commerce has to pay always in cash so e-commerce operator will raise the invoice for the restaurant service basically swiggy zomato will go ahead and raise the invoice they will collect the gst and this gst which is collected has to be always paid in cash e-commerce can't use its input tax credit would supply of goods or services other than restaurant service through e-commerce be taxed at 5% without itc always remember only with respect to restaurant service 5% will come other services pay whatever GST rate is there that will be applicable. Would restaurant service and goods and service other than restaurant sold by a restaurant to a customer be billed under the same or billed differently? Baba, always remember one thing. If I am a service, if I am a restaurant, one person went ahead and placed an order. He went ahead and placed an order for food also. He went ahead and placed an order for goods also from me. Now, for the restaurant, for the food, anyways, the e-commerce will raise the invoice. So, what I am advised, I am advised that for food, I will go ahead and do billing separately. Basically, billing will be done by whom? E-commerce. And for the goods, I should go ahead and provide separate bill to the customer. Can I go ahead, everyone? Who will issue invoice in respect of restaurant service supplied through e-commerce, whether by the restaurant or e-commerce? Baba, e-commerce operator is liable to pay the tax. E-commerce will go ahead and raise the invoice. The last one over here is clarification is required in respect of in regards to reporting of restaurant service value and tax liability in GST return. Always remember one thing, e-commerce operator will go ahead and show the supplies in its GSTR1 also, correct? And in GSTR 3B, the e-commerce operator will go ahead and pay the tax by showing as his outward supply. Baba, but you have to go ahead and remember in this scenario, what about the supplier who is the restaurant? Baba, restaurant also will go ahead and show in his GSTR 1 and GSTR 3B. He will not pay the tax. He will just go ahead and report. However, the e-commerce operator will report in his GSTR 1 and pay the tax through his GSTR 3B. Here we are done with a complete revision of your chapter number 
4, which is charge of GST. Remember one thing, everyone. What is the amendment over here? Section number 93 becomes very important. Section number 95 becomes very important. And the circular which I told you, please remember that. I will go ahead and close my revision on the chapter of charge of GST over here, everyone. Bye, guys. Take care. So, today's quiz is section number 95, there is an amendment, amendment which has come with respect to restaurant service. Yes, sir. Now, with, because of the amendment, you will have to go ahead and tell me, because of the amendment, what is the impact on various stakeholders? Who are the people who have been benefited? What is the loss to the industry? You will have to go ahead and tell me the various impact because of getting restaurant service under section number 95. Go ahead, quickly comment in the comment section and let me know. One lucky winner will be sent chart book version 8. Right, everyone? All the best, guys. I hope you had a great time enjoying the revision. Please don't forget to leave me a comment if you enjoyed the revisionary. Also, subscribe to the channel and don't forget to like the video and hit the bell icon. Hitting the bell icon will be benefiting you guys. Why, sir? Why, what is the benefit? Baba, I'll be uploading such kind of revisions openly. And when I'm uploading the revision, you will get a notification instantly. Right, everyone? Yes, sir. We will go ahead and do that. All the very best, guys. Love you all. Keep revising. Keep practicing. Take care. Good luck for exams. Love you all.